up y'all it's randy aka naturally fearless and welcome back to my channel so in today's video we are going to be talking about why your wash and goes just aren't working out i get a lot of people that send me messages dms or whatever asking me how do i get my wash and goes to pop even though i don't use you know top high price products you guys know i am all about saving money and keeping my hair care on a budget so i have written down i got a list a couple of tips that you can that you should take into consideration when you're doing your wash and goes i have been natural you guys i want to say how many years i think six years now six or seven years i don't remember <laughs> But I didn't really start wearing wash and goes like consistently until like last year. Twist outs were my thing. I didn't really care to wear wash and goes. But then once I figured out my wash and go, it clicked and my wash and goes start, you know, going into their maximum potential. So just want to let you guys know I have been through it all. I have made all the mistakes. So i'm sharing this with you from experience okay so the first tip is understand how much water your hair needs for a wash and go now some people like to have their hair completely drenched in water and some people don't need as much water for your wash and goes so you have to play around with it to see how much water you need i like for my hair to be very very wet because when it is i have less frizz and i get its maximum definition also the water helps distribute whatever products that you are using it helps that product glide on easier so play around with it understand if you need your hair to be completely soaking dripping wet which i recommend to try first or if your hair doesn't really need to be that wet step number two work in smaller sections for better results okay until you master that wash and go you need to work in small sections if you guys have watched any of my wash and goes um, i have a complete wash and go playlist that you guys could check out you see that i work in small sections when my hair was longer i didn't need to work in as smaller sections as i do now if you work in smaller sections you are making sure that you're getting all of that product into your entire head versus trying to work in like four sections and then distribute that product. Take smaller sections and really work that product in, okay? Smaller sections, better results. Tip number three, make sure your hair is detangled. However you choose to detangle, finger detangle, using a denim and brush, whatever you do to detangle your hair make sure your hair is detangled y'all can you even imagine trying to style your hair if it's not thoroughly detangled that's like creating a whole frizzy tangled up ball of hot mess so when you're putting that product on make sure your hair is thoroughly detangled because once your hair starts to dry you automatically know that your hair is shrinking up because of shrinkage so if your hair is not detangled and it's shrinking up, it's just getting all matted and that is just, you don't want to deal with that. Okay, so make sure you detangle your hair. Tip number four, understand that there are different techniques when doing your wash and go. You have the shingling method, you have the rake and smooth, the prayer adherence method, different methods to achieve the results that you want to achieve. When my hair was longer, I used to do the rake and smooth, which means I used to rake the product in my hair and smooth it down. Now that my hair is shorter, I like to do the shingling method. If you guys have paid attention to any of my wash and go videos, you see that I take small sections and I take pieces of those sections, like maybe like this big, and I'll smooth it and curl it, smooth it and curl it at the ends. That is the shingling method. I prefer that method now that my hair is shorter because it really, really makes my hair pop. When my hair was longer, my hair popped better if I just raked and smoothed it. So understand that there are different techniques. Play around with each technique so you can see which ones give you the best results for your wash and go. Tip number five, 
make sure your hair is clean. If your hair is not thoroughly cleansed, you're basically taking a product from your last style and bringing it into your new wash day because your hair wasn't properly cleansed. So you got the product from the last style and now you're adding new product on top of that. So that's just adding more buildup, more just everything. Your products are not given the chance to actually work on your hair because you're basically just piling product on top of old product. I tell you guys all the time, I wash my hair twice. Okay, on my wash days, I wash my hair twice. That's what works best for me. So I know that my scalp is thoroughly cleansed and I know that my hair is thoroughly, thoroughly cleansed. I've tried the co-washing method. I've tried washing my hair just one time. Neither one of those worked for me. I learned that washing my hair twice really cleanses my hair, cleanses my scalp, and gives my hair a clean slate for my next wash day. Tip number six. Do not forget your roots. I always tell you guys, when you were wearing your hair straight, relaxed, when you were flat ironing your hair, you did not forget to do your roots. You did not start in the middle of your hair with that flat iron. You took that flat iron all the way up to the roots and brought it down. So make sure you're doing the same thing when you're applying your product. Make sure you get up in the roots. You don't wanna have puffy roots and then the bot the middle to the ends of your hair is super defined and popping. Number seven, I see this all the time. After people, you know, do their wash and goes, they keep consistently touching your hair, flipping your hair, doing just all types of everything. When you finish your wash and go, let your wash and go set itself, okay? So when you're finished, do not touch your hair. Let your hair sit for at least 30 to 45 minutes before you do anything else with it, before you go in with a diffuser, before you go in with a blow dryer, whatever the case. Because if you don't, everything that you just did, you're gonna mess it up because you're gonna start trying to manipulate it and then you're just causing frizz. Also, you don't want to stretch your hair or separate it or do anything with it until your hair is 100% dry. Same thing that you would do with your twist outs. You wait until your, your twist out is 100% dry before you start to take it down and separate it. Think that same thing when you're going in to manipulate, stretch, whatever you're washing out. It needs to be thoroughly, 100, completely percent dry. And the last thing, know that everybody's hair is different, okay? I mean, I know we like to watch our favorite natural hair gurus and our favorite natural hair influencers. We're trying to figure out why their results are coming out like that and our results are coming out looking like trash. <laughs> know that usually they have taken the time, they understand their hair, they've learned their hair, they're giving you tips and tricks on how to learn your hair. Your hair is different from my hair and what works for my hair might not work for your hair. Even though I give you guys different ideas on products that you should try, that product might work for my hair and not work for your hair. Or shingling might work for my hair and not work for your hair. You got to get out of that trying to think that your hair is gonna look like somebody else's and learn to understand and love your hair for what it is. Also, don't be afraid to try different techniques, different products, different everything when it comes to your hair because that is the only way you're going to learn your hair. This is how I learned my hair, just trying new things, trying new products, trying new techniques. I really hope that this video helped you. I hope you learned something. And if you guys like this video, make sure you go ahead and give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Follow me over on my Instagram page at naturally underscore fearless. Make sure you definitely hit that subscribe button and become a part of the fan band. We have fun over here. See you later, booze.